I welcome you here to our time of worship together. The text for our message today will come to us from our Old Testament reading of Ezekiel chapter 34. Now as we gather together, I invite you to make this a prayerful time of worship. And so as we gather together this day, let us begin with a word of prayer to the Lord God. Almighty Lord, my creator, redeemer, and comforter. As I come to worship you in spirit and in truth, I humbly pray that you would open my heart to the preaching of your word so that I may repent of my sins, believe in Jesus Christ as my only Savior, and grow in grace and holiness. Hear me for the sake of his name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins to the Lord God. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to each of you, and instead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today, which is also, again, the basis for our message this day, comes to us from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16, and verses 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep, that have been scattered. So I will seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock, 
they shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between the sheep and the sheep. And I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Our second Bible reading this day comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Begin reading with verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God, the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he's put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are in subjection, it is plain that he is expected to put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him, who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. And at this time, I'd like to especially address the children that are with us here today. Hey, kids, do you ever, have you ever put together a puzzle? Have you ever tried to put together a puzzle? I was working on one uh, this morning here. Uh, It's a puzzle. I I believe it's supposed to be the United States, but but it's kind of hard to tell because there's some pieces missing. And that kind of makes it incomplete. That's not so good. So I'm really not sure what I can do about that. I was at, oh, I think I found something. Oh, yes. Look, I found one. Here's Florida. I can put that down there. Good. Good. Well, I'm one piece closer. I wonder if there's any others around here. Oh, found another one. Just a minute here. Way over here on California. That must go right there. Good, good. We're making progress. And I thought my eye caught one over here. Oh, yes. Here's Missouri. That's good. We're making progress. I wonder if there's any others around here. I'm still missing a few. I've got to gather them all together. I found Minnesota. That's good. That's our state right here on the altar. There's there's Minnesota. And I've got one more to go. I wonder. Oh. There's Maine in the cornucopia. Oh, good. Good. Well, good. You know, it's a lot easier when you can gather all your pieces together to put a puzzle together. Now I can see it is it is the United States, and, and that's pretty great. You know, in some ways it kind of reminds me of our Old Testament reading today where God speaks to us and he says that he's going to gather his sheep together. They've been scattered all over the place. And and when God's talking about sheep here, he's talking about us. He's talking about people. In many ways, we've been scattered, haven't we? Life's been a little different. Maybe you can't go to school quite this way you used to. Maybe things are different with family celebrations, church, all kinds of different things. We've kind of been scattered around. And furthermore, we kind of wander off. We stray away, kind of like sheep do. We go off our own way and and we commit this sin and this sin and we kind of wander away from God sometimes. But in our Old Testament reading today, God makes to us a great promise. He is going to gather together all those who have been scattered. Not just pieces of a puzzle, but people. He's going to find us. 
He's going to call us to believe in him. He's going to forgive us because he died on the cross for our sins. He's going to bind up our injuries and our hurts and our wounds. He's going to make them better. He's going to give us strength. And he's going to gather us together in heaven. So that when we gather together in heaven, it's going to be like one giant puzzle. All people from all over the world brought together in the presence of God. And as you believe in Jesus, God will find you. And he will gather you together to be in that place as well. And so we might be scattered in this world, but we can thank God. We can thank God for his promises that he will gather us together. I'm going to talk more about this in the, in the message here today, and I'd like you to listen very carefully to see what else you can learn about what God has promised and is going to do for you. Amen. In our gospel reading this day, then comes to us from Matthew chapter 25, begin reading with verse 31. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, You did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Thus far, the gospel of our Lord. We join together in confessing our common Christian faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his own Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, some of you know that my parents grew up in the eastern part of Germany during World War II and in its aftermath. And it was 
After the war, when things became especially difficult for my dad's family, as the, the Russian front came back across Germany and Germany had lost the war. It was then when they really began to suffer some of the brutalities of war. My dad found himself living under Russian rule and Polish control. And they didn't always treat the German people so well. In fact, it was in in May of 1947 when my dad and his family, they learned that they were being relocated. They were simply told to to get out and start walking down the road to the village. They had to walk about four miles to the neighboring village by foot. It was speculated later that this probably was happened because then they couldn't carry so much with them. Because one can well imagine that after they left, whoever was there came in and went through their home and their belongings and, and took everything. They lost all that they had. Then when they got to the neighboring village, they were loaded up on wagons and and again went further on their journey, being told nothing about where they were going. They came to another place, and there there were wagons coming from other areas, and it became clear that the, the Polish police were removing all the Germans from this area. There they were ordered to get onto a freight train, boxcars, about 30 people to a car. There was some straw in the corner and and the doors were then boarded up and the train began its journey. They would be on the train for several days, not knowing where they were going. And not knowing where they were going, of course, invited all kinds of rumors to begin to pass pass through through the people there. And one of those rumors was that they were headed to Siberia. This was a concern because they knew that the communist Russian government enslaved people there. And so fear set in. The train moved very slowly and they made very slow progress on their journey. It was after two days of travel that word began to spread that they had just crossed the Oder River. The Oder River had now become the new eastern border of Germany. They had not been traveling to the east going to Siberia, but instead they had been traveling to the west. And they came back to their homeland of Germany. It was at that time that a great sense of relief came upon all the people on the train. And my dad recalls how they began to sing a hymn. Holy God, we praise your name. God had delivered his people. He had rescued them from enslavement and brought them to the West to freedom. Anytime my dad recalls that story or tells that story, there are still tears in his eyes. In our text today from our Old Testament reading from Ezekiel, we learn of something even greater. For the people of Israel, they had some bad experiences as well. They had some bad leaders, bad shepherds that watched over them, and they were led into sin of all kinds of sorts. And on account of the sin of the people, the Lord God raised up the wicked nation of Babylon. Babylon would come and conquer the people. They would lose their freedom. They would lose their possessions and all that they had. They were put not on trains, but yet they had to travel east. They were traveled in exile. They left behind their homes, their possessions, and their things for others to take. And they headed east and were exiled in the land of Babylon. There, they would suffer various difficulties and trials. There, they would be at the mercy of the Babylonians for the next 70 years of their existence. For us, most of us, if not all of us, we haven't had that kind of experience. 
But yet, sin has dealt some blows in our lives, hasn't it? On account of our sin, we too have many problems and difficulties and hurts and hardships. Due to the dangers of sin, we too have been scattered abroad. Certainly this past year, 2020, we have faced trials and troubles and tribulations. We've been scattered as a flock due to the illnesses and the trials around us. We have been separated from the body of Christ. At times it may seem that we have been left to ourselves. What has it been like for you to be scattered, to be separated? Maybe share it with someone else here today. Furthermore, on account of our sin, really we find ourselves lost in sin. Oh, we might be able to know exactly where we are. We know where we are on a map. We know where GPS can find us, our location, where we're at. But yet spiritually, in many ways, we've wandered away. We have strayed away, unaware of God's divine presence with us at all times of life. We've strayed into various sins and strayed away from the Lord God. In what ways have you strayed from the Lord and his word? For some people, they may stray from God in their worship life. They've neglected it. It's become an occasional extra rather than a priority in their life. For others, they might stray by neglecting their devotional life. Life's just too overwhelming, too busy, too chaotic to take the time to to read our Bibles, to study our Bibles diligently. And so that's kind of been put on hold and we wander away. For others, perhaps they've strayed by neglecting to teach their children the Christian faith bring up their family in the way of the Lord. It's all just kind of been put on hold for a while. And still others may stray in their life of sanctification, of living holy lives, godly lives, of living according to God's words and his commands and his direction. So we stray into various sins. In fact, we're told that during this pandemic that addictions of all sorts have been on the rise? In what ways have you strayed from the Lord God? How have you been like sheep, strayed away from the flock, strayed away from the good shepherd, strayed away from the word of God and the promises he gives to us? The danger is real. Sin causes injury and trouble in our life. Obviously, there are those physical injuries that may be experienced in this broken world, sickness, disease, and a whole host of things. But there are also those spiritual injuries. Sin hurts our relationship with God. It separates us from God. It taints our view of right and wrong. It injures our relationships with one another. In what ways? Has sin injured you? Possibilities of filling out such a list could be endless. But give it some thought and bring those things to the Lord. For like the ancient Israelites, we too are weak. Our weakness is often seen as we give in to temptation as we let our minds wander in places where they should not, as we fall to the rumors and the fears of the dark world, as we let the world's priorities become ours, rather than being transformed by the renewing of our mind? In what ways have you noticed weakness take hold in your life? But God delivers us. 
God rescues us. And that is the good news that God makes known to us through the prophet Ezekiel here. God not only delivered my dad and his family and those who were with him from from Russian enslavement, but God delivered the Israelites many years earlier. Although the nation of Israel had been scattered, God sought them out. And he allowed them again to return home. He allowed them to cross the Euphrates River, to come back to the land of Israel, and there to rebuild their lives, to rebuild their cities, and even to rebuild their temple and their worship life. But as we consider this, And these words from Ezekiel, we realize that there's even a far greater deliverance that is yet to come. It is the one that we are waiting for. It is the one which is yet to come when our Lord Jesus returns again. When he ushers in his kingdom in all of its fullness and in all of its glory. There will be no place that we will be hidden from him, for he will find us. Take a look at verse 12 of our text from Ezekiel 34. God says, I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered. Regardless of where Christians may be scattered in this world, God is going to come, he's going to find us, and he's going to gather us together, just like pieces of a puzzle. It is why Jesus came in the first place to seek and to save the lost, as it says in Luke 19. Christ came to seek us out, to call us out of the darkness of our sin, to call us out of the rumors and the fears that we experience, to call us out of our straying away from the Lord, to call us to himself. Our Lord Jesus came to go to the cross so that we might be forgiven. And then we might be cleansed. That he might rescue us from rumors and fears, from addictions and lonely struggles. That he will seek us out in our homes and in our isolation. He will find us wherever we are. He will find you wherever you are. Oh yes, you can be aware of the divine presence of the Lord is with you in your living room as well. God will deliver Jesus has come in order to bring us home to our land, as verse 13 promises us. God will bring us not just to maybe life as normal or not just through and out of this pandemic. God is talking about delivering us not just to some some earthly home or land in this world. For really, we are strangers and pilgrims in this world. Our true home is heaven. And our Lord Jesus, he seeks us out. He has come into this world so that we may be sought out and that one day we will be brought to our heavenly home. Oh yes, we are almost there. We're on our way. Jesus is coming to seek us out. And what a great promise and comfort that can be. Jesus will come as the good shepherd. And what will he do? He will bind up the injured, our text says. He will heal us of whatever ails us. Oh, and there are many injuries, aren't there? The physical injuries and hurts, the sicknesses and diseases, he will heal us of all those things, just as the miracles in the Gospels make known. He will come and he will bind up our wounds and and heal us of our spiritual ailments as well. He will forgive our sin, cleanse us. Oh, I look forward to the day when every ailment, every illness, every sickness, every weakness, God will bind up those wounds and will heal. Furthermore, God will strengthen the weak. We may be weak and powerless, but God will strengthen us. 
Jesus experienced weakness as he went to the cross for us, suffered and died. But he also rose from the dead, displaying his great power and his strength over sin, death, and the power of the devil. He conquered these enemies. And though we may be weak, yet he makes us strong. And so we can go forth with that great promise, knowing that we can do all things through him who strengthens us. Another aspect of what Jesus, our good shepherd, will do, as described by Ezekiel, is he will destroy those who seem so strong. He will destroy sin, death, and the power of the devil. Jesus has has risen from the dead. He has conquered death. He has overcome Satan. He has overcome this world. The enemies that we face may be strong and powerful, and at times it may seem as if we are at the mercy of their hands. But God will deliver, and God will rescue. He will defeat them, and he will make all things new. Indeed, God is the good shepherd who rescues us. The deliverance that he brings to us will be greater than the one that my dad experienced when he and his family crossed the Oder River and were rescued from a life of enslavement by the Russian government. The deliverance God brings to us will be greater than that which was for the Israelites when they were allowed to cross the Euphrates River and return to their homeland of Israel and and rebuild their lives. The rescue that God brings to us is one that will be total, complete, and eternal. The lost will be found. The scattered will be gathered together. Our injuries will be, and wounds will be bound up. Our weakness will be taken away and will be given strength. Those strong enemies of sin, death, and the devil will be defeated and overcome. And oh, what a blessing it will be. For then we will cross the Jordan River into the land of promise, of heaven itself. It is what our Lord Jesus promises to all who believe in him. Indeed, this gives to us a great reason to praise the Lord God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. With thankfulness and gratitude, then, we go to the Lord God and we offer him ourselves, our lives, and our offerings. We give thee but thy own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we have been scattered. This pandemic has separated us from one another. Our sin, our struggles as we wander away from you in many ways. Lord, these have been difficult times. We need you and one another. You are the good shepherd. Gather us, O Lord, from wherever we are scattered. Bind up our wounds. Strengthen the weak. Defeat the strong powers of evil, of sickness, of disease, death, and the devil. And gather us together, Lord, safely in your fold. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, the good shepherd who binds up the injured and heals the sick. 
We pray, O oh Lord, for all those who face sickness, disease, for those who suffer from this pandemic, or through those who suffer from other trials and troubles. We pray especially for those that we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, this Thanksgiving, we ask that again you would remind us and you would show us the many reasons that we have to give thanks to you. Continually turn our hearts and our minds and our lives, our entire being to you and the abundance of the blessings that you bestow upon us. Lord, you have given to us this good land in which we live. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, from every evil course of action. Grant that we who come from many nations and with many different languages may become a united people. Support us in defending our liberties and give those to whom we have entrusted the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we ask these things as we pray the prayer you have given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. As I invited you earlier to make this a worshipful time and experience for you, as we depart and close this worship service, then let us say a prayer. Almighty and merciful God, I have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for my many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. I thank you for this undeserved grace and ask that you keep me in faith until with all your saints I inherit eternal salvation through Jesus Christ my Lord. Amen. I have a, one announcement and that is a reminder uh, that as next week we celebrate Thanksgiving. Our Thanksgiving service at Rosa Sharon is planned for Tuesday at 7 p.m. If you're not able to make it uh, in person, it is my intention to record that service and, and get it uploaded and posted on Wednesday so that you too can join us for what is truly the real reason for Thanksgiving, and that is to give thanks to God for his many blessings. Go in his peace.